Alright, so welcome back to Dale of Merchants 2. So for this video, we're going to be talking about the diligent, pale-throated sloths and all of the uh, various items uh, in their um, inventory, if you will. So the first one here is the Steady Achiever, who is obviously the representative, representative of all of his uh, uh, stuff, obviously, or their stuff. So this is a Technic card. It says, at the start of your next turn, draw a card from your deck and then place it into your hand. So this is, once again, a technique that won't fully resolve until your next turn. Okay? So you'll play this card. It will stay in play. You will continue your turn, and then it will stay in, your, into, in play until your next turn. At which point, at your next turn, you're going to draw a card from your deck. And then you're going to place it into your hand, the card that you drew. And then you'll be able to discard this card. Okay? So that's how the Steady Achiever is going to work. Maybe we'll do it up here so it's, you can get a better view of the cards. Okay. So here we have Shopping Journey. This is another technique. At the start of your next turn, choose a card from the market and place it into your hand. So there'll be cards here sitting on the market. Okay. You're going to, at the start of your next turn, you're going to get to choose one of them and then you get to place it into your hand from the market. So that's really cool. It's like gaining. So, so it's it allows you to gain maybe some of the ones that cost a whole lot more than others, obviously. So that is a very useful card in helping you get and acquire, um, obviously, cards in the in the uh, merchant stall here, or the market, I should say. So that's a really cool card. Shopping journey. And once again, it's a technique that won't be fully resolved until uh, the start of your next turn. It will be fully resolved, obviously. Okay, so here's another technique. Uh, search your discard pile for up to three junk cards and place them into your hand. At the start of your next turn, you may throw away one card from your hand. So you'll play this card, you'll search your discard pile for up to three junk cards. So if there's only two, then you'll just place the two into your hand. And then at the start of your next turn, you may, th you may throw away one card from your hand. The reason why that's still a good thing is because maybe you did this ability, you looked through your discard pile, and you didn't find a single junk card. Then, when it's time to throw away a card from your hand, you have no cards you want to throw away because you have no junk cards. Well, that would be a bad thing, obviously. So that's why it says you may throw away one card. You don't have to from your hand. So that's really cool. But if you've got some junk cards, you'll definitely want to throw away one card. And so the card house cleaning is definitely really cool. Now once again, this is a technique that won't fully resolve until the start of your next turn. Okay? Alright, so here we have Siesta. At the start of your next turn, you may search your discard pile for a card and place it into your hand. Okay, so once again, this won't fully resolve until the start of your next turn. So that's really cool. You can search your discard pile at your next turn and place that card from your discard pile into your hand. So maybe there's some good cards in your discard pile when you, when you utilize this technique. So a very useful card. Siesta. Then we have the lunch break. Draw a card from your deck and place it into your hand. At the same, at the start of your next turn, do the same again. So, this is a technique that's going to happen when you play it. You're going to play this card, you're going to hit to draw a card from your deck and place it in your hand. Then, at the start of your next turn, you'll do it again. You'll do the same thing you did again. So, it's another technique that won't fully resolve until your next turn. But, you'll still get to use the technique on this turn, too. So it's a really good one. So it's probably, the lunch break is definitely probably one of the best in uh, the Sloth's inventory. Then we have Ironing. At the start of your next turn, all cards you get, all cards you use get plus one 
to their value for that term. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, what does that mean? What does plus one mean? Plus one means it will work for just about anything you can think of. If you want to buy a card, okay? If you want to buy a card, but all you have are junk cards in your hand and they only cost one, for instance, you could basically make all of your junk cards a two, and then if you're purchasing a card from the market, it will make it much easier to purchase a card from the market because you're going to have cards in your hand that are going to have an extra number on them. We'll make it very easy to get cards from here. But that's not all. It's a plus one value for, their, for that turn. So if you are building a stall, a stack in your stall, and you don't have exactly the number you need for your next stall, um, you can uh, use this to increase that chance and maybe perhaps building a stall regardless. So let's see here. Let's use an example. Let's say I wanted to build, um, let's say I wanted to build my fourth stall, okay? Actually, yes. Let's say I wanted to build my fifth, I wanted to build my fifth stall, okay? So let's look for some cards. Let's do these two, for instance. Okay, let's say I was trying to build my fifth stack in my stall. Well, this is only a three value. So I could only use this if I was building my third stack, which you can't obviously do because you have to start with the first to the eighth. But if I was wanting, to, but if I had played that card, ironing, if I had used this technique, at the start of your next turn, all your cards get a plus one to their value for that turn, then this would be a three instead of a two, and this would be a two instead of a one. So that would equal five. And then I could place them down, and that would be five for the turn for my stack in my stall. And then, of course, obviously, after that, the ironing effect would no longer be valid for that turn, at the end of that next turn, this would get discarded. But it doesn't matter if things change later down the road. This, once you build a stack in your stall, it will stay there unless a card says otherwise. So that is really a powerful card. You could use that to your advantage in a number of ways. And so this is definitely a card you might want to get for something, for pulling off something like that, as a for instance. So that's a really good card. Okay, so we explained how the sloths work. So we will do another critter merchant in the next video.